Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you. Today is July 2nd and uh, summer, summertime is here. Uh, we are feeling the heat. I don't know where you are, but I hope you are in good spirits and doing well. Today, uh, hello Robert, uh, it's so good to have you here. Uh, today we're going to have something different. We're going to talk about Heizartig. Let's talk about stress, not only for the holidays, but something came up in my life and I wanted to uh, share and find out how you cope with certain stressors in your life. I don't know where in your life you are with either kids or parents, but I am living temporarily with my mom. And have you realized that not, not that they become children, but some do, but it's so much harder to care for our parents and uh, show them directions because they're not listening to us than it is to someone we don't know, like your clients. And I don't know, how do you feel? Does that stress you? How do you cope with it? Because I have found certain ways to cope and I wanted to see how you deal with it, how you cope with your parents, uh, if parents are around. Uh, my dad is no longer around, so it's my mom. So let me give you an example. If she's hurting, I like to take care of her and say, um, because I used to do massages, it's like, mom, let me do the massages. No, you go and work. I don't have time. Uh, you don't have the time, but I do have the time. I want to take care of you. No, later. Go to the chiropractor. No, it's okay. They only do five minutes. It's not like the one hour massage. So here's the dialogue. It's like, I know she does not want to take me, for me to take time to tend to her. And yet we want to tend to our parents, for our parents. We want to be there for them. We want to care for them. But no matter what we say, because we are the kids, it's like, no, um, you don't have time. And yet when you make time, it's like, I don't want to bother you. So there's this dialogue that goes on and on. And how do you cope with uh, when your parents do not deem your information or they don't want to bother you and yet they are still in pain and you want to care for them and they get upset. And when they get upset, you get upset. So here is this cycle. And I think a part of the biggest part of my generation, uh, it's, not that I am stubborn, but they become stubborn. They are stubborn. Oh, Adrian says teens do the same thing. Well, yes, they do. You are so right, Adrian. I believe the difference is teens still look up to you and you still are in the authority versus parents uh, feel they are still the authority until a doctor who is more authority uh, in authority or someone besides their children, until they feel, it's not that they don't value or respect, it's just they wanna make sure that you are not inconvenienced. And then there are parents like one of my clients who the parent is so demanding that she has no time for herself and it's constantly being in that position of taking care of, taking care of, taking care of and being depleted. She's got three kids working, the husband is working and uh, two, both her parents are around and yet one of the parents is very ill and the other parent is very much in demand because they are not getting along. So how do we 
this generation of us that takes care of our parents cope with it so do you have situations that you've been in and you get frustrated not knowing how to be loving and yet stern to be caring and yet feel frustrated because it's like no matter what you say um, they have an answer that it's valid for them let me give you another example if it is hurting mom let's go to the chiropractor well the chiropractor is only going to take care of this but what about that then i can do the massage no because that's not the problem it's this problem so and that reminded me of an uh, of situations and clients in the past that i want you to realize sometimes it's not physical but it is psychosomatic and what do I mean by psychosomatic? It means that there might be lack of attention, they might be feeling depressed, they might be feeling lonely, and because of their feelings and that they can't do, or in their mind they can't do, although they are very much able to do, uh, it's the, those pills that they think they take thinking that the pill can help and it does but it's like a band-aid but it's mostly the emotional aspect of, of what we feel that becomes depressing that becomes uh, self-defeating that becomes self-sabotaging and it's the emotional impact that has on our body that we feel as if it's the body so the physical body has this reaction to what we feel and what we think that is mainly what i work with as a hypnotherapist and what i do is take a client to a stage and a state of deep relaxation that once they once they overcome the pain aspect of it we delve deeper within ourselves it's peeling that layer of band-aid the band-aid that we place in there just to feel good uh, because of wounds and i'm talking about emotional wounds and mental wounds the emotional and thought process that when we feel bad we feel as if our body is breaking down the body may be in pain but it's mostly our emotional pain that we our parents they go into this cocooning healing they don't want to do anything they think they're not able to do and like when the leg is hurting it's in a way it's showing signs of not wanting to move forward in life because that's what our legs uh, and our feet uh, show as a hypnotherapist when we delve within it's bypassing this conscious level of what we see what we think what we believe to tap into the subconscious part of us that truly has all the answers. And just last week, a client had to overcome this fear. I talked about it, fear of uh, driving and moving forward, believe it or not, came just yesterday and said, I'm driving, I'm feeling safe, I am driving outside of my neighborhood and it feels good to be in control. You see, in order for us to be in control, in control of our body, in control of our mind, in control of ourselves, it's what I like to call it, have the courage. And in order for us to have the courage, we have to believe that we can, to be courageous, to stand up, to move forward. 
So by realizing that I can, I am strong, I am courageous, I am able to reaffirm that this body of mine is housing me, shielding me, and protecting me, and I can. So what I did with mom was I have, of course, the tools, and I said, okay, mom, you don't want the massage. You don't want to go to the chiropractor. How about just close your eyes? Just sit back for just a moment and relax. And she's like, I, you don't have time. And I said, just sit and relax. Bear with me just for five minutes. And I placed my hand on her back around her shoulder. And I said, just calm down and breathe. Sometimes our elder forget to breathe properly. Even we forget to breathe properly which is as we inhale, hold at the high part, hold four, four counts, and then exhale slowly and gently, emptying it. And then breathe one more time. And as she's doing it, I said, just send a message to your legs. As you exhale, I can stand. I am strong and my legs are solid, strong, and I can release the pain from my calves to the bottom of my feet, from my calves to my ankle, and goes round and about, around my ankle, round my ankle, round my ankle to the bottom of my, my feet. And so that as I walk, I can drop the rest of the residual pain onto the floor and walk away. <sighs> drop it onto the floor and walk away. This pain of mine can drop to the floor. And Mother Earth can hold it. I no longer need it. I can move. I can walk. I can move forward. I can walk further. I can stand. I can breathe. If I can do this for one minute, I can do this for five minutes. If I can do this for five minutes, I can do this for ten minutes. And if I can do this for 10 minutes, I can walk for 15 minutes. I can do this today. And if I can do this today, I can do this tomorrow. My body is firm. My body is strong. I am strong. I have the courage to stand up. It took me five minutes. And as she's got her eyes closed, now it's no longer mother, daughter. It's no longer me telling you what to do. But it's like, mom, allow yourself to do it. So in a way, I believe finding this medium of communicating either with our teens or with our elders, instead of us becoming frustrated and them thinking we're telling them, how about we share five minutes of sitting down or communicating and asking them to allow themselves to do something that they have not. Something different, something like visualization, something like just Take five minutes, mom. Take five minutes, dad. Let us breathe together. Let me hold your hand and just sit with you. How often do we just hold the hand of our teenagers or our parents to just sit and do nothing? Remember what I say, even New York Times 
wrote this entire article about what I have been quoting, what I have been saying for the longest time. Doing nothing is doing something. It's an action. It truly really is. It's an action of doing absolutely nothing. Just being. Being present. Being alive. Being in the moment. So here is the techniques for you. For yourself, for your parents, for your teenagers, for anyone that when you feel frustrated, instead of wanting to take care of something and make it right or fix it for them, how about we take five minutes of time, bring ourselves down to this level of calmness within ourselves, and then take a moment, hold their hand, place your hand on their shoulders, sit next to them. Sometimes I do this. I'm going to do, use this beautiful plant to utilize it, but just rubbing their back. Not necessarily wanting to, it's like appease them or saying calm down or doing this rush thing of massaging them. No. Just the same way as we used to do it with our kids when uh, parents, mothers place their child and they just go, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to do the same with our parents, lovingly. Mm -hmm. And if you can hum, Oh my God, it's the most amazing thing we can do. Five minutes of touch, five minutes of embrace, five minutes of loving, giving moment with our parents. It's not enough for us to sit and watch TV with them. It's not enough sometimes just talk about politics or what happened or who is doing what and you know, sometimes they want to be busy about, okay, my other son did that, your uncle did this, your aunt did that, but five minutes for them. I know because of the puppy I have, she is frustrated at home. He is a puppy, frustrating because he has got so much energy. You know, sometimes I'm thinking to myself, what, why did I bring this puppy home? Great energy, but also sometimes too much. Too much for elderly. They need something more subdued. This means I hear your mom. I see you. But I'm not here to fix it because sometimes we don't need to fix it. We can't take their pain away. We can't take their hurt away. We don't even have to fix it, but to be with. That's it. So, hi, Vahe John. Mm, how are you, love? Hi, Carolyn. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, I believe if you are not in here in this position that I am, sometimes we get to be with not only parents, family members. Uh, we can't fix it all, no matter who we are. Either, either you're a, um, a doctor, a healer, either you're a, a financial wizard or a coach, it doesn't matter. We do not have the magic wand because the magic is within them. And if we can turn the wand to a beautiful loving hand to say, thank you, and I am here with you. I hope today's message was beneficial. And I want to hear from you. I want to know uh, what tools and techniques do you use? How do you cope with your own stress level and with your loved ones. And it doesn't matter if it is a teenager or a parent. So if you're watching, please 
I'm open to see comments, respond to comments, uh, or if you are watching this on a replay, by all means, please uh, say hashtag replay. Just type in hashtag replay. Here's another thing I realized. When parents or loved ones, when they go to this time, it's also looking at to see what's going on. I know the last week it has not been easy because yesterday it was uh, 19 years ago, my grandma passed away in mom's arms and she was there. So this mother daughter and she feels the loss, she feels the pain again psychosomatic it's recognizing that there is so much more than what is happening physically so look at the bigger picture when i treat my clients it's not only the issue they come in for it's to also open the box peel away the layers unravel that bow that perfection bow that they come and say you know everything in my life is good except this issue i like to undo that bow take that lid off and see what else is happening in that box of theirs which is called i so it's a beautiful thing to recognize we are more than this physical body. We are energy. We are emotions, plethora of emotions. And if we look at ourselves, there is this electromagnetic thing. That's what chemistry is all about. Sometimes we just come together and we love. And then other times that same person can just ignite and deter. So there's so much happening. I mean, when it comes to watches, I know I have so much electromagnetic uh, pulsation in my body that watches stop working on my wrist. And that's why I can't have this, uh, what do you call this? The, the things that it's this. <laughs> I am stumped with the name. The ones that do your pulse and everything, this uh, high powered nowadays, uh, electronic things I, your iphone is emailing and i i can't function with this it stops working computers stop working on me even watches sometimes stop working on me so there is so much current and i know i can't have electro uh the things that they put at chiropractors because that zaps so in a way, it's understanding your body. That's why I need to do so much grounding. When I was doing massage, it grounds me. Uh, taking shoes off and walking on Mother Earth, on grass. Find ways to ground yourself, recognizing all this. So when I work with you or your loved ones, that's what I look at. The entire picture of who we are, not what is happening now. So again, be loving, be open, and uh, now that uh, 4th of July is coming, I have this uh, newsletter that goes out, and today's newsletter is about being free, having freedom, strength, and courage. So I wrote a quote. I love quotes. I come up with quotes all the time. You can give me a word, and I can find a quote and I can write a quote for you instantaneously. So today, thinking about 4th of July and when we are honoring being an American, our national, uh, our nation, and everything good that we stand for, the flags, the stars, each color, what it represents, right? Because each color, the white, the red, and the blue, represents something. The stars represent how many nations, how many states that is on that flag. So I came up with this quote, and it says, because of freedom, strength, and courage, 
To have a sense of freedom, we must be strong in our convictions and have the courage to stand up for our beliefs. Again, to have a sense of freedom, we must be strong in our convictions and have the courage to stand up for our beliefs. Hi, Zolita. How are you, my lady? So I hope you have a wonderful celebration of 4th of July for the freedom, for being in this country and no matter where you are, to have freedom of speech and freedom to live in your room, in your body, and have the strength, strength to stand up for yourself, have a voice to speak, and know that you matter. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. May God bless you and the universal light surround and protect you.